Uh, we've been out to this event a few times now, uh, three, four years. Great event. Really enjoy it. We've had several people come up and talk about their personal plans, which is exactly what it's all about. We're helping them figure out the details. We have super resources available. And for those who don't make the event today, we have those same resources available on redcross.org. Or you can come to us and talk to us in our offices. Locally, there's one on Midway Road in Fort Pierce, and then one on Canner Highway in Stewart. So easy to find out. OK, we're going to look at um, some slides today. That'll keep me on track. And uh, I'm perfectly fine with answering questions along the way. So just uh, let me know you have a question, and we'll go for it. So today, we're going to talk about hurricane preparedness. And we're going to talk a little bit about sort of before and after. And that's what the phases are about. The phases are about being prepared, preparedness phase, and then the, the response. And the response is all those activities that happen immediately after a disaster, whether it's a flood or a hurricane or a fire, whatever the disaster might be. So the next phase is recovery, and that's long term. And so we don't have time to get into all the long term recovery issues today, but if that's of interest to you, again, get in touch with us at the Red Cross. So let me back up one moment and just talk about our mission. The Red Cross is a volunteer organization. The Red Cross is all around the world. We're part of the Red Cross and Red Crescent societies. And in the United States, of course, we're called the American Red Cross. We're in every state. We're all over the place. We have a mission that's very simple. We basically harness all the energy and efforts of our volunteers, add that to the generosity of our donors, and by putting all that together, we can help alleviate a lot of pain and suffering and help people be prepared and respond to different kinds of emergencies. So what do we do? It's something that we do around the clock. 24-7, 365, there are people on call. Typically those people are going to respond to a house fire, for instance, and that is our most common kind of disaster. And we do that quite a lot here in St. Lucie County. So our disaster action teams, which are volunteers, They'll be on call every day, every week, year round. We also have people that are prepared to help with the military and their families. We do a lot of work with emergency communication and other projects for all the uniformed services. And so we have no bases here in St. Lucie, but we have a lot of families. So we're going to help their families when it comes to emergency communication and planning and responding to their own personal disasters. So we've got some statistics up here. Um, 52,000 home fires a year. So when I say we do a lot of fires, we really do a lot of fires. That's nationwide. 52,000 families are going to have a Red Cross volunteer, usually in the middle of the night, there to help them. It might be raining. It might be snowing. It really doesn't matter. When the call goes out, we partner with Fire Rescue, and we go right there. While the firemen are putting out the flames, we're showing up to help out. I see a couple of our volunteers right here in the room, and they, they're nodding, yep, been there. I've been there too. It's very rewarding work for anyone who's interested in helping out that way. We teach skills like CPR, first aid, swimming, lifeguarding. We also teach a lot of preparedness, like we're doing today. So the humanitarian aid that we provide typically is going to be food, clothing, shelter, medical help, I mean, this is what people need, their basics. When the chips are down, that's what we're here to help with. And that's here and around the globe. So this is the season. We're all here talking about hurricanes. This is the season. 2015 is supposed to be a fairly quiet season. But you know, in 1992, they were saying the same thing. There were groups of people all over Florida. that was, oh, it's going to be a quiet season. That's good, because I really don't feel like getting my shutters this year, and they cost a lot of money. Those sorts of things, right? Well, sir, the hurricanes are named, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and 1992 was, of course, an A hurricane, right? Andrew. So Hurricane Andrew surprised a lot of people, and it exposed a lot of weakness in people's preparedness plans. Um, and there were many, many issues I'm sure you all know about. So this year, again, there's supposed to be a quiet season, but look at how many storms they're talking about. Um, they're, they're expecting us to have something like three or five hurricanes in the Atlantic, and this is just the Atlantic, not the Pacific or elsewhere in the world, but just the Atlantic. And they're saying that maybe one will be a real big one. We'll see. These are just predictions, and the models are great, but they're just predictions. And so we need to be ready for whatever does happen. So how do we do that? 
In the Red Cross, we organize these things into these three basic steps. Get a kit, make a plan, and be informed. So when it comes to a hurricane, the kit usually involves a lot of supplies, right? So to be ready, you need to have the food and the water and the medical supplies. You have to think ahead about if you're going to evacuate or if you're going to stay home. It completely changes your, your planning and your preparedness. So you need to investigate that. That's part of the be informed part, too, is you need to know what's happening. And you need to know to respond appropriately to every kind of storm. And they all are a little bit different. Okay, so what's the kit going to look like? Well, obviously we're going to have the basics. The most basic thing is water. So who here has been, before I go any further, who's been through a hurricane here in the room? Most of you have, that's good, but there's a few of you who haven't. Here's one little tip, right? Everyone always says, yeah, really fill the bathtub with water? Well, if the water supply stops, you do, but definitely make sure you clean that bathtub really well. Use some bleach, sanitize it. But don't forget this, everybody, almost everybody, has a water heater, unless you have one of those, those little heaters, that uh, inline heater. If you have a water heater, you have a supply of fresh, clean, potable water in your home. Don't forget about it. In my home, it's an 80-gallon tank. So if I need that water, I simply put a little hose on the drain at the bottom of the tank, and there it is, I've got 80 gallons of fresh water. So don't forget those things. See, that's kind of the point of all this. It's about thinking ahead. It's about planning ahead. It's about getting prepared. When I think about hurricane preparation, I think of it in the same way that you might think of a really big camping trip. Nobody would just up and jump in their car and run off into the woods for a week without planning and getting all the supplies that they need, right? Because out in the woods, what you've got is what you've got. Well, in a hurricane, it's very much like that. Once the storm comes, services stop. Public safety stops, fire rescue stops, no more access to the hospitals, nothing. You lock down for a while. So that's the point. Be prepared, plan ahead. Okay? So redcross.org is mentioned here on the slide. Everything that I talk about today is pretty much available on redcross.org. So you can go on there and look for preparedness, and there's lots and lots of this material. And at the very bottom, again, it's what is your plan. If you live in an evacuation zone, you need to evacuate when the word goes out. When the county says evacuate, they really mean it. They're very reluctant to do it, so they are pretty darn sure you're going to have a lot of water in your neighborhood if you live in that zone and they say evacuate. So you've got to do it. So have your plan on where you're going. So if you're staying home, your supplies are different. You have a lot more of it because you may be alone in your home for some time. So we say a few weeks, right? But if you're getting in your car, you're not going to pack up for a few weeks. You're going to have a plan to get out of the evacuation zone. You're going to assume that most services will be available there, whether it's a neighbor's home or a friend's home or a hotel that's well outside of the evacuation zone. So you're going to prepare by having a few days supplies. Okay? So it's very different. As they say, you have to, you have to look at each storm and take it as it comes. So part of your kit then also is equipment. You know, everyone knows about flashlights. I just bought a whole bunch of batteries about three weeks ago. You know, that's just what you do this time of year. Make sure those batteries uh, fit. They match your flashlights. Everyone in your family should have at least one flashlight available. Okay. I put in some batteries and found out the bulbs don't work. So check it all out. The other thing is that very funny looking little radio. That is a dynamite little device. I have one in my bag with me today. It's very similar. It runs on solar, has a little solar panel built right into it. It has a crank, so if the batteries go down, you crank it and it, it charges it up. It has AM, it has FM, and it even has the weather, so you can get the weather alerts. That's, that's the money right there. You need to know what's happening with the weather forecast. Everyone knows that media thrives on sensation. There's a lot of great professional media out there, but what you really want is you want the straight scoop with no sensation. There's a couple of places that I suggest you look for information. The weather radio comes from the National Weather Service. That is our number one source of weather. The Red Cross, County Emergency Management, Fire Rescue, State Department of Emergency Management, Federal Government. We all watch National Weather Service weather. 
We don't look at all that spaghetti model stuff. That's entertainment, okay? Don't mess with all that. Go to the good source, National Weather Service, National Hurricane Center, okay? And the weather radio, excellent choice. Also locally on the radio, WQCS, which comes out of community college. They're part of the network that gets the straight feed from the state, from the county government, on evacuation orders and all the important information. None of the fluff, none of the sensational stuff. They give you the skinny on what you need to know. WQCS. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, weather radios range in cost, and they can be quite inexpensive. They, they sell them really cheap. But if you want a radio such as this, which is also a flashlight, also has a solar panel on it and the crank, it's probably going to range between 50 and 80 or 90 dollars, depending on how much you want. Some of these will charge your cell phone, and that's pretty neat. So you, you crank the little dynamo, and before long you've actually got cell service, which you're going to want. So, okay, money was the last item on that slide. When the power's down, the ATM card's worthless. Make sure you have some cash with you. And think about what you're going to need for a few days. These are the documents, some items that you need to make sure you have with you. Now, I know how I do it. I have a file cabinet. And if I have to evacuate, I pull out the bin with the lid that keeps it watertight. And the second drawer of that file cabinet goes right into the bin, and then the bin goes into the car. Now, I'm at work, so I'm talking about this is my wife's plan, to be honest. But that's what she'll do. And so she'll have all those documents with her. So as you can see, they involve identification, insurance policies, things that allow you to you know, do the recovery phase of a storm. So you don't want to lose those by leaving them behind. So let's talk about the plan. You can't just make a plan on the fly. You've got to have some sense of what it is you're planning for. So here are some wonderful resources for you to check out. If you go online, you'll see that your county government is listed right there, but there's also federal. They've got lots of planning tools. We have planning tools too. Whichever one you use, they're all going to be excellent. And you can start to look for the information that's listed there. And that would also include the services that you might need if there was a disaster. So <clears throat> recognizing that in a big disaster, regular services go down, transportation becomes difficult, and so on. You want to know exactly how to get through to like rumor control, which also serves as an information source. So if you're wondering, I think I need to go to a hospital, is it open? You can call rumor control and they can help you with that. So that's your county that does the rumor control numbers. Um, you can check on your health department. You may or may not interact with your health department. They have lots of resources available. And so you, you can find out how to do that. Uh, in Martin County, it happens to be just around the corner from my office. Where it is in St. Lucie might be near or far, but you won't know unless you check it out. And that's the point of this slide, is to think about it. So you're gonna t also plan for your family and don't forget your pets. So who's got a pet? Somebody have a pet here in the house? I know Ray's got a pet in his house. You've got one, several folks in the back, okay? Pets are difficult in a disaster. If you're talking about a hurricane evacuation or even just dealing with a hurricane in general, pets are a challenge. So you have to stock up for them the same way you stock up for yourself. So when you're buying the cans of soup and the other shelf-stable food, make sure to get lots of pet food, right? If you're evacuating with your pets, you really do need to plan ahead. If you're going to stay with a family member or a friend, you better talk about this pet situation, particularly if they have pets of their own. So you've got to think that through. Maybe you're going to go to a hotel that's outside of the evacuation zone. That's the sort of thing you should check out now, not when the hurricane's on the horizon, and find out if it's a hotel that accepts pets and what are the conditions, because they're all different. There are some pet, sh pet shelters, but they're not in this location. There's one in Indian River County, there's one in Palm Beach County. That really isn't going to help you out. So talk to the humane societies. They all have, uh, certainly are very aware of and have plans for disasters. They may have a place for you, but they'll probably have you register in advance. Talk to your vet, talk to the animal hospitals. Those are the places where you're likely to be able to put your pets because, again, if a hotel won't take it, 
you haven't got a place to go, family and friends, you're really going to have a, a problem. Many people will choose to stay in their home simply because of their pet. If you're in an evacuation zone, that is a very poor option. You really do not want to stay in an evacuation zone because of your pet. You really need to do your homework today, tomorrow, to make your plans, because the last thing you should do is stay in an evacuation zone. These are some other points here about telling people what your plan is. I could have a great plan, but if I don't share it with my wife, my kids, my relatives who are out of the area, my employer or my neighbors, then nobody knows the plan but me. It isn't going to work. Any good plan will have many people involved in it, and it'll only work if they know the plan and they're agreeable to it. So my work knows what my plan is. I'm going to be at work. A couple of days before the hurricane, I go home, I take care of my own issues, I'm back at work, and they know that. Your situation may be different. Whatever it is, share it with your family and your friends. Um, it could be a neighbor who has a plan and you want to know about their plan. So I have neighbors that I help out occasionally and I want to know what their plan is so that if something goes wrong or I see a situation, I'll understand whether it's right or wrong. So that's just a simple thing. And the communication bit, this isn't a sophisticated thing really, just have a good list. And you know what, I don't know what anyone's phone number is anymore because I've got a smartphone, they're all in there. Write them down, write down those important phone numbers so that you can reach your family and reach your friends. And then tell them, if I evacuate, this is where I plan to be and this is how you can reach me. See, none of this is very difficult to do, you just have to spend the time to make it happen. So preparing your home, there's lots of great vendors here today that will help you with shutters, with windows. Um, you can get lots of help with all kinds of preparations. Uh, don't forget about your trees, what's outside. Your house could be great until a tree limb falls through the roof. That happened to my sister-in-law. Pine tree fell on the roof and literally went right through that whole half of their house. And they weren't in that house for another year after that till it was finally repaired. So had the tree been pruned, they'd have had no trouble. So preparation. Okay, they talk about rain gutters. That's obviously to avoid flooding issues. Know about what you're gonna do with your cars or your boats or your RV, whatever you've got outside. And know that when the wind picks up, those large heavy things, they will move. If the wind gets going enough, they will move. So I lost a shed in Wilma, Wilma, the one that surprised us all. My shed got ripped off its foundation. Um, solar panel got torn off of the roof. They did great, Francis and Jean, but little Wilma got us. So again, have a plan on where you're gonna move your, your vehicles and any personal property that you need. If any of you happen to have horses and whatnot, there's a whole nother conversation about what to do with large animals, many challenges. In some counties in Florida, most of the emergency planning is about large animals. A little different here on the coast, but that's true. So here's an evacuation map. That happens to be Broward County. Every emergency management office up and down the coast has a very similar map on their website. And so as you can see, they're color-coded and they also show you evacuation routes. So if you're in that zone, you really need to know about it. The higher the wind, plus the tide and some other factors, the zones change. So that's why you'll see multiple colors. So the slide says to hide from the wind and run from the water. The point being most homes are okay with the winds, the typical storm winds, but the water is another story. So you get into a shelter that can handle the wind, but if that's in a flood zone, all bets are off. So that's the point there. We used to evacuate, we used to, we used to say run, 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 and people would go clear to Orlando, they'd go to Tallahassee, they'd go to Alabama, they'd go wherever they, we really don't suggest that. That kind of an evacuation is dangerous, it's very difficult, um, our state Department of Transportation has done very sophisticated studies and what they show is at the height of an evacuation, a two hour trip will usually turn into a 12 hour trip. Well, if your plans to go to Orlando, which is a two hour trip, you could be spending the next 12 hours on the interstate, stuck in traffic, running out of gas, being very unhappy, and then here comes the storm and you have nowhere to go. So 
When you evacuate, 10 miles is more like what you want, not 100. Have some food, check 511, know your plan. Where are you going to stay? Again, it could be as simple as getting to a friend's house outside of the zone. Okay? If it's a Red Cross shelter, we've got a great app. It's a free download for your phone. Uh, Leonard outside can help you with that. You can go on to redcross.org and get it. You can go to Google or you can go to Apple. All free downloads. It'll be able to tell you what shelter not only is, exists in theory, but what shelter is in fact open. And that's what you want to know. So general population shelters and special needs shelters. Special needs shelters are for people with medical conditions. They're going to require extra help. If you have crutches or a walker, you can go to a general population shelter. That's perfectly fine. Those functional needs are not a problem. If you need real medical assistance, you really don't want to end up in a general population shelter because there isn't going to be that kind of support. And you could be there for a few days. Now, we've had people um, deliver babies in our general population shelters. You know, when it happens, it happens. And we've dealt with it. We've had good luck. In Martin County, we had two in the last 10 years. And it worked out, but I wouldn't bank on it. So check out the special needs shelters if that's what you need. You register with the county. So finally, be informed. That's the app I just told you about. What it does is actually serves as a gateway to 12 other apps. So rather than filling your phone with 12 different apps, you can get this one and it links you to all of them. And that could be everything from a tornado warning to an open shelter to a, an opportunity to volunteer. So these folks are monitoring social media. Social media it can be a very useful tool, but here's the one thing I will say. If you need help, 911 is still the place to go. If you expect the authorities to respond, don't Facebook them. They might see it, they might not. They might see it and not have the ability to help you because they're the social media folks. 911 is there for your emergencies. So there's Twitter, we're talking about the various social medias, and there's so many now I can't even keep up with them all. And we have them too. You can go to our Red Cross sites if you want to do Facebook and, and Twitter. And then safe and well. Safe and well is a very simple idea. You're evacuating. You want your family to know that you're safe. You can go to our website, redcross.org, or if you happen to be at a shelter, you can most likely be able to do it there. And a simple message that says, I'm here, I'm okay, don't worry. It's a simple thing, but it's important. So watches and warnings. Basically, it comes down to time. If you hear a watch 48 hours ahead of time, that means it's time to start putting your plan into action. The simple things. When you get to the 36-hour warning, that means you can count on some nasty weather. Doesn't mean necessarily the eye of the storm, but you're going to get some nasty weather. So that's when you really go the extra mile and you finish up doing all the things that we've talked about. So make sure your home is secure, and if you're evacuating, all of that's in place. And then after the storm, here's where more fatalities happen than when a hurricane arrives. It's post-storm. People go out after the storm before it's safe, and they run into power lines, and they run into standing water. Standing water is a sort of unexpected, unknown threat that is out there. People quite often will find that they are stuck in standing water, or even worse, swift moving water and suddenly they've got a problem. If you have mobility issues, is that the time to be wading around in chest deep water where you can't see the sidewalk, you can't see the road, you can't see the hole, you can't see the, re the ditch? No. A couple of folks drowned in Palm Beach just a couple years ago after a tropical storm because of the standing water. It's the real threat to watch out for, okay? But there's the power lines, contaminated water and so on. All these are issues and again, Go to redcross.org for all the details because we're moving through this rather quickly. But don't eat spoiled food. Don't drink contaminated water. Make your plan so you've got all the resources that you need. And then this section. I'm going to skip over this section, but this is about business continuity. I'll just say this. Share your plan with your employers. Or if you volunteer with an organization that's counting on you, share your plan. Because if people just scatter to the wind, that organization will suddenly have real issues. Uh, so, simple thought, share, share your plan. 
Uh, at this point, if you've got any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. We covered most of the bases. Ray, you've got one? One little tip with your pets. Get them a jacket, a storm jacket. Our little pet, our dog, she starts panning, she gets excited, she can hear the thunder over at Okeechobee. Put it on her, storm's coming, put that on your pet. Get one of those, it's well worth the few dollars that they cost and saves you some grief. All right, and then my parting thought is if you, and I'll take your question in a moment, but if you have ever thought about volunteering, this is a great time to do it. When disasters arrive, there are lots of things for you to do whether you're trained, you don't have to be an emergency responder to help. We help people with housing, with clothing, with distribution of bleach and tools and all sorts of things. We have people that answer phones. We have every kind of job you can imagine and it's incredibly rewarding. Just go to your Red Cross or go to redcross.org and fill out your volunteer application. It's free, the training is free. You'll get to know some really wonderful folks in your community who are also interested in helping others. So that's my last point. And sir, I think you had a question. So his question had to do with evacuating, and in particular, it had to do with going up the east coast of Florida. You know, heading north and south, we only have a couple of routes, and that's why, in part, they get the traffic gets so bad. So 95 and the turnpike are going to just get clogged up. So that's where we kind of got back to, you know, tens of miles rather than hundreds of miles. If you can get out of the flood zone, and get into a safe place, that's usually a good plan. Heading across country is kind of fraught with possibilities that, that can be very difficult. Any last questions? Well, I thank you very much. I congratulate you on being prepared this year. Take care. <laughs>